call Oka to order at 8.33 this morning. And here we all are. We're going to make this a quick and efficient meeting this morning. Um, one of the things that we talked about last week was minutes. I will admit I did not have time to read minutes, although they are in, thanks to George, they are all in our folder. So I would take a vote on passing the minutes, except that I will tell you right now that I would not be able to um, be informed enough to do that. Does anyone feel informed enough right now to do that, or should we make sure that we all are for our next meeting? I prefer to wait. I prefer to okay. wait. All right, then absolutely we will. But I do have a question about them if we have a second. Certainly, yeah. Um, we list uh, members present, we list members absent. Um, we also have a category called others, which um, we have up to now been including members of the public. And um, I feel like members of the public should be allowed their privacy. If they want to speak in public comment, then their name is entered into the record. Yeah. But if they're here just to observe or do whatever they wish to do, I don't see why we should be entering their names in the uh, present uh, category. I know we've done that in the past, um, and uh, but I think I just have a question for the committee whether um, just uh, is that appropriate really? So my understanding from my times on committees is that yeah, you don't unless unless they stand up and want to make a comment, you you don't. They're here. Then that's I I agree with you. That's exactly how I understand it. Anyone else like to have we? So I would agree that we do not have to do that, and if. Is our present minute taken? Well, I think we shouldn't do it, actually. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, we shouldn't, right, we right. shouldn't do that. I agree with you, George, 100%. I don't think it makes sense. Um, so I can ask our current minutes taker to make sure that she does not do that, and we'll make that our policy, and we'll let her know. That raises another question um, yep. that we should discuss. Um, the current system is that we have someone usually taking minutes, yep. unlike today. And then it goes to either Darcy or me. Darcy and or I put it into um, a fairly crude format. Um, uh, I make one or two, I correct spelling errors. Um, I sometimes insert numbers just to sort of make it a little clearer instead of just yeah. a string, right? Um, but I try not to play around. I don't play around with the content. Mm -hmm. um, but occasionally I have to correct a, a typo. Or I put some kind of header mm -hmm. to try and organize it. But people should be aware of that. Um, that's what I'm doing. If they don't want me to do that, or if that's inappropriate, um, but I'm doing it simply to make it easier for anyone reading them, including ourselves. Um, I also did this time a strike the names of the public that yeah. were present because I felt that it was inappropriate. So I want people to know that, um, even though in the past we've done it, we haven't really talked about it. Um, so, in at least the minutes that I put into the folder, um, where I was conscious of what I was doing, um, I would delete any name other than um, a counselor or some other official guest mm -hmm. and public names of the public were not listed mm -hmm. unless they spoke in public comment. So, so is, are people okay with that? Because that's what I did. Yeah, we just kind of all went around and we just, everybody nodded. Okay. We agree with you. I think we'll, we'll, we can vote on it, but I think no, no, that we no, all agree no, by consensus no. that absolutely that makes sense and that will be our policy. Also, I apologize that there's only been a posting agenda with everything that's been going on. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been a nicely written out agenda, which makes fitting anything into minutes a lot easier. So I will make sure that when I'm posting agendas that I actually have one that if I realize that it's an extra step for you or Darcy to fit them in, mm -hmm. but I could, I mean, I can make sure that I do, I make sure that you have an easy thing to fit everything into and or we can talk about whether or not you would like me to do it because I don't want to have no, I, I you don't know, think extra the work. Should, the chair but would, would having, you know, how I usually did, like just a nicer, uh, ooh, sorry, agenda for yeah, It always us. helps. It have it help? it, no, it certainly helps. Um, though sometimes, and again, Darcy can speak to this as well, um, you know, when you're looking at it, you're making sort of an editorial judgment. And one editorial judgment would be just not to touch it. Right. Um, you just, you know, literally just put a header, you know, headline. I mean, don't put anything except highlight things. I try to highlight motions so people can see what yeah. the motions are. Yeah. But I don't play around with the text at all. Um, but I prefer, I would prefer this just be run by one human being. Um, having two people involved is so, really, but that's the way it is. 
Well, um, not necessarily. I'm wondering. So Phyllis usually puts them like she types. She just types them, like them straight up. You know, just S right. So I'm wondering if I have that posting agenda. If I could show her how to be able to use like a template, and then be able to put it in. I could do that. I could work with her. Yeah. And she seems like a really quick study. No, yeah. So I mean, if I'm she could be taught to how that. to do this, and the only yeah. reason we're doing it is because we're putting it into this format. Right. She could easily do that herself. Yes. And then it's just one person. We read it. If there's a problem, we raise it. Right. But now, basically, you're dealing with two people. You're dealing with the note taker, and then you're dealing with a member of the committee, either Darcy or myself, who makes minor editing changes. And you have to trust us that we're not <laughs> changing. I trust you guys, you know. <laughs> but I don't want to make extra work for you. So what I'll say is that I will make a concerted effort to make sure that we have an agenda that's set up that's easy when you take minutes to fill things in where we hit them. And that um, that I work with Phyllis. Just I I think that it would be pretty easy for her once I show her how to do it right. for her to then do that. So I I will make a point of doing that just to. And then she ease. would just send them to mm -hmm. us, and that would be. Yep. It. Yep. So I can definitely do that. And um, I I believe I'm responsible for this Monday's notes, which aren't done yet, and I will get done soon. And w what's happening today? I see Phyllis is not here. <laughs> no, she's not. And she told us she wasn't going oh. to be. She's going away. Um, and she may not be here then, I think, the meeting after this. I'm not sure. She she was going away. She was taking a little vacation. Oh, OK. Um, so I will definitely make sure that I get on that. Um, would either of you like to take, you said, Darcy, that you were feeling that it was your turn today? Monday. 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 I'm going to get. I don't know. Did, did we Darcy, I'm going to ask you a favor, and you're not going to like this, but um, <laughs> both Evan and I have to make, it's not much, I agree, but we have to make a presentation, I assume, this morning, don't we? Both of us have yes. to say something. Um, it's, you know, um, so it would be a kindness if you would do it today, um, but if you don't want to, I'll do it. Um, I'd be happy to take care of Monday's minutes, because essentially I was going to offer to do that from now on. Um, but if we can get a system where it's just one person and it's done, then we don't need either you or me. But if we do need this two-person system, I was willing to say, let me just take that on, um, because it is an editing task. Um, but that's really also your call. You've been doing it as well, so you may prefer a different system. But if you'd consider doing it today, I'd appreciate it, simply because uh, Evan and I have things to do. Uh, Not that you don't have things to do as well. Uh, I, ha <laughs> I, I actually have a big meeting tonight, too, the first meeting of the uh, energy. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Okay, all right, yes. All right, I, I can take minutes. Okay, and I'm pulling up our meeting packet, but it's... And I'd just like to say to everybody on this committee that I really appreciate all of you, and I would like to acknowledge the fact that the last month has been um, very difficult and very stressful and a lot of hard work, and I realize we're all really tired today, but I just want to say I really appreciate all of the hard work that this entire committee has done. Like, we're an excellent committee. That's how I feel, and I'm more than happy to help everybody in any way that I can. Um, Yep, I'm pulling it up. It can, seems like it doesn't. My computer I, doesn't want to connect. Okay. So Evan? can I just ask a yeah. um, clarification on how we're going to do things today? Yes. So I was hoping that you and George would give your reports. We would do that, and then we would vote on them. Let me clarify. So George and I each have a report yes. with recommendations for RCV and PVC. Yeah. We also, and I just added them to the packet because I assume we should consider them um, at the same time, have re appointments from the town manager for yeah. RCV and PVC. So that we could either say we're going to take RCV first and do my recommendations and Paul's recommendations together as part mm -hmm. of RCV and then go to PVC, or we could do town council appointments first. So me and George's recommendations and then go to town manager recommendations. Is there an order in which we should do this by committee or by appointing authority? Um, that's a very good question. Um, my OCD would say that we do yours and for each committee we'll do, we'll vote on um, the town managers for ranked choice voting on yours. I would, I, yep, yeah, that's, and does anybody have a Objection to that, or do we also? So you want to do all of ranked choice voting at once, mm -hmm. and then do yeah. all the participatory budgeting? Yeah. 
Yeah. I have no problem You're with okay that. You're okay with that? Okay. All right. Then let's do that. And for whatever reason, my computer is not, my SharePoint is not coming up. So I have read everything. But um, Evan, do you want it? Would you like to start? Do you feel that that's? So you have in your packet, um, and it's also uh, attached to the public meeting posting. So it's uh, been available to the public since Friday. Uh, my recommendations to the Rank Choice Voting Commission. So to give you a little bit of background of what happened, uh, me and the town manager and the town clerk uh, hosted interviews last Wednesday. Uh, we had nine interviews scheduled for Wednesday in person uh, that we did back to back. And then we also had one phone interview uh, that we conducted very early Friday morning. Uh, for that one, it was just the town manager and I, the town clerk, was unable to be there. Uh, after the interviews, we all had a discussion to see how we felt about the candidates. And uh, it was uh, maybe surprising, although I, I think it was clear from the interviews, uh, that we each listed our top six candidates um, and we all had the same exact six candidates. Uh, and so that made it really easy. I should note one person um, did, during their interview, uh, withdraw their application um, because of time commitments. They sat down and they said, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I have time to do this, but let's talk. And by the end, that person had decided that they did not have time. Mm -hmm. um, and so at that point, the town manager and I had a, a very brief discussion as to uh, who would appoint who, which ones would be town council appointments, which ones would be town manager appointments, um, and then I wrote my report. And so the three people I am putting forth are Tanya Lees. Uh, she is a mathematics professor at Amherst College. Uh, she was, uh, had a really in-depth knowledge of the mathematics behind elections and behind ranked choice voting and literally what mathematical formulas work best for representation. Um, really interesting perspective. She had also aided Amherst College in their selection of their new mascot, the Mammoths, uh, which they had used ranked choice voting for. Uh, I'm also putting forth Jesse Crafts Finch. Uh, Jesse is a business owner and a software developer. Uh, he, is, uh, he was enthusiastic about this. Uh, he's also been affiliated with uh, Voter Choice Mass, which is how he heard about this. So he's had an interest in ranked choice voting for a while. Um, and I think having a software background would be really useful because there's going to have to be a lot of computation involved in ranked choice voting. Um, and he also asked really good questions about voting machines, which was an aspect of this that I hadn't previously considered. And so I thought that was really useful. Um, and then John Bryan. John was a, worked at, is retired. He used to work at UMass. He had a really great background um, in communication and writing and also working with large groups of people and personnel. Uh, he's also been one of Margaret's, uh, our town clerk's election workers for a long time, and so um, had, a, had a really good insights on sort of the election worker staff training that would be involved to successfully implement this. So together I felt that those three people had a, had a each had their own thing that they brought to the table. It wasn't, uh, you know, three mathematicians. It was uh, sort of a, a communications and staff. It, it, was, it was a really great thing. Um, one thing I mentioned in our last meeting was that I, OCA had not provided uh, either George and I with sort of evaluation mm -hmm. criteria. And so at one point, um, I was asked, how are, what are we looking for in candidates? And I was caught a little bit flat-footed um, because I hadn't put, I you know, circled this around in my mind, but I hadn't put pen to paper on this. Um, but the main things I looked at were, one, I wanted a commission that had a diversity of skills and experiences. Um, so we had actually a, a fair number of mathematicians apply, and I thought that was great, but I, I also didn't want a committee that was majority mathematicians. Um, so I felt sort of like uh, you know, having a software person and a math person and also a, a communication person was a really great balance. Um, and you'll also see that reflected in uh, the town manager's recommendations. Um, I also wanted to see that they had an ability to collaborate with other people. Obviously, this is a committee that is going to have to uh, produce their recommendations by September 1st, 2020. That's uh, if they meet twice a year, they're looking, I mean, twice a month, they're looking at only 25 meetings mm -hmm. um, to get this. 
thinking of how many meetings we've had, <laughs> 25 meetings is not that many meetings to propose an entire new system of voting for Amherst. And so the ability to work together would be really critical. Uh, and then I also looked for two things um, that I, I think were my personal opinions. One was uh, candidates who demonstrated existing knowledge of ranked choice voting, um, and that there's different types of ranked choice voting. So when they would bring up that ranked choice voting uh, isn't simple and there's multiple ways to do it, to me that showed uh, some, some base knowledge of ranked choice voting. Um, you know, Tanya has lived, used to live in Somerville and so was very familiar with Cambridge's proportional representation voting. Um, which I thought was really was a really good background. So if, if they showed that they knew what it was and that they knew that there wasn't just one way of doing it. Um, and the last thing was I, I gave some preference to candidates who acknowledged um, challenges of ranked choice voting and critiques of it. Uh, I think there were, there were some people who came in and said, I, I would like to work on this. I don't know that this is the best system for voting. And we'd say, why, and they would, they would give very well-reasoned arguments for and against it, and I thought that was really useful, because if you had um, just a committee that was just gung-ho, ranked choice voting is the best system of voting we could ever have, um, then we wouldn't have some of those critical discussions that I think are needed to figure out how best to do it. So um, acknowledging the, the challenges and the critiques of ranked choice voting I thought was really important. So that's the criteria that, that I used, um, and so I'm happy to field any questions on either uh, my criteria, the process, or the candidates that I'm putting forward. Evan, I think you did an amazing job, as usual. Really amazing job, as usual. And I very much appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> that helps. Um, one question I did want to ask you, this is just a housekeeping question, is since we sent you out without really talking about qualifications, the other thing is, is that usually we, we've made it like our protocol to send um, information about the board two people when they apply, and I realize these are two boards that we, they're brand new, so it's hard to say, but did you have anything, because um, I just feel like things got so rushed that you probably didn't. Uh, no, we okay. didn't. Um, so it, wh one thing that you may find interesting, and I almost just did this for fun, is in the supplemental information you'll see um, a description of the process that we used for planning board and zoning <coughs> board that was our adopted process, and you'll see strike throughs to where things didn't occur right. for this committee, and it's um, the majority of the document. Uh, part of that is because I, I do think that we got caught all of a sudden having focused so much on planning board and ZBA yeah. that we went, oh, well, right, we have to do these two, and there's a time constraint on them. Um, but you're right, the other thing was that we just didn't, we didn't have a whole lot of information other than what was in the charter. Um, but what I was really impressed about was that the majority of interviewees, and certainly all that I selected, uh, one, it had appeared, had memorized the charter language wow. around this, um, yeah. or just read it right before they walked into the interview, <laughs> but either way. Um, but also um, had really thought critically about what the role of this committee would be and what, would be re what they would be responsible for. Um, and so to that extent, I felt like at least for my pool of candidates, we didn't even really need yeah. that. Okay. Yes, George? Just a, a question about the experience of the interview itself. Um, I'm wondering if your experience was like mine, um, that we go in with a set of questions, mm -hmm. but um, there's a fair amount of, uh, we have uh, other people asking questions in our interviews, unlike yeah. yours. So there's a fair amount of give and take. Um, it's a little bit more informal. Um, all the questions get uh, asked at some point and answered, um, though on occasion, at least for me, some of the questions were asked by another member of the uh, interview team or they came out in the course of uh, the conversation. So um, I didn't have the feeling that I was going down a list and um, there was a fair amount of, uh, of course, I, as you'll learn, uh, there were four people present in my interview, part of the interview team, but it was um, a collegial, informal sort of a process, not one which I feel you probably were under because you were alone <laughs> yeah. and you were following a set of questions yeah. that pretty much you, you so um, was that your feeling too or your experience or um, how did it go just as an interview with, uh, you had at least three present at one point, right? Right, so I, I would agree. Um, so I brought in, I approached the town manager and the town clerk uh, with the OCA question and I said, 
My understanding from my committee is that I am limited to these questions. I personally cannot ask any question that is not on this list. Mm -hmm. But of course, the town manager and town clerk were not subjected to that restriction. And so what we did was we had that list. We each had that list in front of us. And we used those as sort of our base questions. And we alternated who asked what question. The only difference was the town manager and the town clerk were allowed to ask questions not on the list yeah. and often did. Um, so what that meant also was these were 15 minute interviews. Um, and so we had our OCA list was eight questions, I believe. Um, for some candidates, we went through all eight questions. Uh, for others, because the town manager or the town clerk felt compelled to ask a, a different question that sparked a different discussion, uh, there were some candidates that didn't get asked every question on that list. Mm -hmm. um, although I would say that those questions were often indirectly answered in answers to other things. But it was a very sort of collegial, conversational. I tried to, I, I kept myself to the questions that right. OCA had adopted. Mm -hmm. um, but one question, just to throw out there, that, that the town manager asked of almost every candidate that was not on our list that was really great was, um, and I'm going to try my best to paraphrase um, from a week ago, was something along the lines of um, there are a lot of different ways to do ranked choice voting, a lot of different models. What values would you prioritize in choosing a model? And that was actually a really great question because people, you get to hear what people, what was on the forefront of their mind. So some people said, we want people who, I want to see people who are elected who represent the middle ground, right? And some people said, I want to see greater representation. And other people said, I want to see uh, you know, greater turnout. And so you got to see, and that wasn't a question that we had, um, but it was really useful. And so it was sort of a very casual environment. I'm sure it was much less structured than planning board and ZBA, strictly because it was the joint appointing authority. And there was a lot more flexibility uh, for both the, the other people present. So I guess. You, uh, I don't know that we'll ever have to appoint um, committees or boards again that are brand new. I know that when we tried to, OCA tried to come up with its questions um, for interviews, that one of the people that we did speak to to get some input about what would be some great ideas was the town manager. So what I'm wondering is, is that now as our pace hopefully pretty soon will start to slow down a little bit, um, we should make note of the fact that um, we'll need to take the time to come up with some kind of an informational packet, because um, I want to make sure that we do that across the board, um, and also then make it one of our, in our decision tree, that if it's for something brand new or very different, we could ask different people before we, you know, as we're writing our questions, we could ask input from other people, you know, that might be more specific to a certain board, if we think that through and that that makes sense to all of us, and then go down those questions. Um, I know if Alyssa were here, <laughs> she would, I, I have a feeling she would say something around the fact that we have questions and there are questions, but we can talk about that the next time we decide to do something like that. But I definitely, if, and I know Darcy's doing minutes, those are things I'd want to look back at and make sure um, that we added in or at least discussed. And, and just a question to you guys, how did you, did it feel did, it seems like you had a good experience in doing your interviews that way. Did you feel at all like maybe there was more information solicited that you felt like we had said we didn't really want? Would you would, was there any part of you that felt like you might want to do this um, similar to the way that I did and, and do yours sort of like, I mean, it's not by yourself, but being the only one who can ask questions, you know, they would be, it would be more time consuming but we won't have so many committees to be doing at once. Is there any feeling about that, either of you, either of you? I always feel in any circumstance that it's good to have at least another set of eyes and ears. Mm -hmm. um, and so in my case, there were three other sets of eyes and ears, and it still, I thought, worked well. Mm -hmm. At some point, that could probably get unwieldy, um, but I thought it didn't in, our, in my case, and I certainly benefited from um, it sounds like Evan did as well from the questions and give and take of the other members doing the, the interviews. So um, I would always prefer an interview situation which uh, has at least two people um, involved and maybe even three. Right. 
And also a asking questions that yes. you felt like that yes, was supportive. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. No, it, it, yeah. given to, it's a more natural, mm -hmm. and um, people, as Evan pointed out, questions will be asked that you just never would have thought of. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's nice to have uh, at least one or maybe even two other um, individuals present. That's really good knowledge to have. Yeah, I would, I would agree with, with George. It was, um, I think it was a, a nice, uh, it was nice to have sort of their input, but also their questions, their responses. Um, and it also made it easier. And honestly, just from a logistics perspective, I mean, we did nine 15 minute interviews. Inter there was no time between right. them. And so um, we each took turns of who started the interview. Yeah. And whoever started the interview introduced the committee, um, introduced why there were different people in the room, sort of explained the joint authority, uh, appointing authority, introduced the process. And it was sort of just nice that I, did, I didn't have to start every single <laughs> interview, right? It could be handed off to someone so you could, you could catch a breath. And it was, it was nice to distribute the questions a little bit. Um, and, and different, because there were different personalities in the room, different people interacted. And so there were some people that I'd be like, I'm having trouble connecting with. And mm -hmm. but then you know, the town clerk could jump in and, and, and ask. And so I, I think it was, it was really useful. Um, it, having gone through that, it made me appreciate so much more what you had to do. Because <laughs> you had the same workload, except it was, well, no, you had double the workload, and it was all on you. And, um, Ooh, this committee owes you a drink or something. <laughs> we'll all go out later. Well, and, and just to share, so for me, um, I think it was two days, and it was it was back to back. It was 15 minutes, um, and I think what did we have like 23? It's all a blur now. Um, so there were quite a few, and I will say that I actually, when I had the questions, I spent a good two days. Um, grilling my children and my husband and making them pretend that they were different people and having a chance to, you know, but, but seriously, like I think you might have found when you were asking questions that you, they have to be natural, they have to have a flow to them. And I also started timing um, myself. So there was that feeling of making sure that you made someone feel comfortable and that you, you had sort of an internal feeling of timing, you know, without like actually putting your, you know, stopwatch there and, and, uh, but I found it really um, interesting and exhilarating um, to meet so many people, and I really enjoyed it. Saying that, also, I've run my own business for a long time, so I have done interviews like that for, for people who apply on the farm. Mm -hmm. So I think, that, I think that definitely helped me feel more mm -hmm. comfortable in that role. But it's good to, to hear about how everybody did and how they felt about it. Darcy? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know that uh, these, some of these committees are different from others, especially in that ranked choice voting has some chosen by the town manager and some by the town council. Um, uh, so I, you know, like the relationship that we have to our co-interviewers is different really, depending on the committee. And um, Evan had said that you know, you kind of took a straw vote um, at the end of your discussion. And I'm wondering, I think it's really good to have the discussion, but I don't think the, the straw vote part of it is necessarily a good idea for all the different committees. Because then it puts us in a position as the deciders of, of not necessarily, you know, going along with the decision of the other people. Like, I don't think, you probably didn't do that, did you, Sarah? Or um, did you? So I was encouraged by our president to, to be open, this is my first time out, right? Um, to be open to some input, or at least be able to feel like I could ask questions of those people if I felt like I needed to. So um, I did leave some space for that, but um, I didn't, I specifically did not solicit anything um, other than questions that I would have about process mostly. I did get some, some input a little bit about 
um, you know, their takeaway. But I, I think you're 100% right, Darcy, that this is a town council appointment. So while I appreciate staff tremendously, um, and they're a great help, especially as we're starting out, that when it comes to appointments, and this is gonna sound a little weird maybe, but in order to keep it pure, to make sure that it really is a town council appointment, that you really have to be making a lot of the decisions as a town councilor. And one of the things I tried very hard to do was to listen to everything I heard from other councilors and to make sure that I brought all of you with me into that interview. And I, we saw the vote, we had a very long discussion at town council. So it's evident that I didn't 100%, you know, couldn't really bring you all in with me. So, um, but I would say yes, I, the, trying to keep it so that you respect everybody who's in there with you, but you're also really making sure that you're, you are there as town council, as a town counselor. Does that make sense, Evan? Yeah, of course. I'm not quite sure that I, um, so going into the interview, the town manager and I had had a discussion of the process that we would use. Yep. And we said we would meet briefly after the interviews um, to discuss and see if we could yep. figure out who, who we wanted to appoint. And the, the conversation was, we would, we, at the end of the interviews, we would say, here are the people that we like. Um, and if it just so happened that we named the exact same six people and, right. and the town clerk did too, right. and that was really useful. But we had had a discussion beforehand of what if we don't name the same yeah. six people? And the conversation was, well then it would be clear, if I was to name you know, Jane Doe and he did not, then Jane Doe would be my appointment automatically. Right. So the conversation that took place had to be, since we agree on the six people, who gets who, right? right? right. But the conversation was, if we don't agree on the six people, then the people who we don't agree with, that will determine who appoints. So I don't think um, your, the characterization of the straw vote um, necessarily ceded any authority to the town manager. It was just getting a sense of what the feelings were in the room. But there was always an understanding that if we didn't agree on those six, the people who we disagreed on would be our, right. our appointments. Um, so I think that. I thought um, we talked about that. We, too, we had, before and, and, and you Paul, went in. we had, and the town manager and I had confirmed yeah. that um, beforehand as well. Uh, w one other point I did want to, I, I meant to mention when I was giving my first report, um, that I do think is uh, somewhat exciting about the three people that I've put forth is um, these are three people who have never served on a town board or committee, who have never been involved in any town's political, in any political debate in town. All three of them, when asked why, they said, well, I've never done anything in town before, and this seemed like a great opportunity. Um, and they were also recruited in very different ways. So Tanya um, was actually recruited by Mandy Jo um, yeah. because Mandy Jo had gone and spoken to her class um, in the fall about uh, when, they were, when their class was doing something on ranked choice voting, they had a couple people come in and talk and, and Mandy Jo was, was one of them. Um, and then Mandy Jo said to her, hey, you should consider it once the council is formed. Uh, Jesse Kraft Finch, voter choice MA, had reached out to him and said, hey, did you know Amherst was doing this? And he said, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you should apply. And John Bryan saw it on the, the town's Facebook page. And so what I think was really interesting was these are, we keep having this conversation about new voices. These are three truly new voices who have never been involved in deliberations in town before in any scale and who learned about this through three very different means. And I think that's important for us to consider uh, in our outreach and communications roles yeah. of all of the different ways that we can reach people. I agree with you 100%. George? I'd like to make a motion. Absolutely. I'd like to move that we accept Evan's uh, recommendations for the uh, Ranked Choice Voting Commission and that we forward these three names to the town council for approval. I second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you, Evan. Say that again. Sorry, I moved into, of course, now that I closed it out, uh, I moved this morning Paul's recommendations 
into the folder. I did that at the beginning of the meeting, so they should be there for people. My computer actually seems to, oh, it's back. <laughs> okay, mine was not doing anything for a while. Oh, so nice to see it working, okay. So the document is, it's a Word document, yep. it, it's TM underscore yep. RCV commission. Um, so this is a, a, an interesting position um, because these are the town manager's appointments. Mm -hmm. He's not here to speak to them. Right. Um, we could just talk about them. The other sort of awkward part is I was there for the interviews right. of these three people. So unlike any of the other town manager's appointments, uh, except for the ones that we'll consider next, yep. um, if you have questions, I could answer them. But if we feel like it would be inappropriate for me to uh, defend the town manager's appointments, then I would happily stay quiet as well. Well, I, I feel a little um, comforted too that in addition to the information that we've received that when you made your list, these other people were on your list. So that, yeah. Did you make that motion, Evan? What? Did you make that motion? I'm so sorry. Okay. I just said I could I could speak with two separate appropriate and I could speak with two people, but if I felt like this is my time to speak with each of them. This is my SharePoint right now. Oh. And it wasn't my SharePoint this morning when I woke up and checked my email. But for some reason, um, nothing's opening and my mail is not opening. So I'm I don't know why that would happen. I've turned it off and turned it on a couple times. At least I have my opening screen, but this is my mail. So while I am informed and I have read them, I am now flying blind as far as making a, a motion goes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've read the information. Um, I'm aware of the information. I have a question. Thank you, George. Evan, um, do you have in your materials the answers that, and I, I wish I had asked this about the previous ones too, but um, I also really like Paul's question and maybe we should think about having a question similar to that in our interview questions, but um, the values question, do you, can you give us their answers of the people that Paul recommended? I yeah. cannot yeah. off of the top of my head. Um, I brought in each person's CV, and I took uh, very sloppy sort of notes all over the CV as they were interviewing. So it would be, uh, it would be in my notes, but I, I wouldn't be able to remember. I remember generally what people said, but I don't remember who said what off the top of my head. Um, and I would also say that not every person was asked that question, because it really depended on how the conversation went um, so some people there was one person in particular that I can think of that the answer to the first question went on for about nine minutes <laughs> these were 15 minute interviews and so we only got about two questions out because we also made sure we the one thing we made sure the two things that every single person was asked was um, why did you apply and then do you have any other questions or comments for us and so um, not every person was asked the exact same questions. Um, so I don't remember off the top of my head what their answer to the values question was. Um, yeah. what, what was the general uh, um, array of answers to that question? So I think that um, the two things that really, three things that came up commonly. One was um, better representation, right? Uh, making sure that the, the electorate feels represented by the people um, who are voted for. Syntax was off, but. Um, a, a second one was, um, it, it, or a second two actually had a lot to do with picking the model and the approach. And one was legitimacy. People have to feel like their elections are legitimate. Um, and, it, and then the second one is transparency. And those two are tied together because with a normal election, right, you look and you go, okay, uh, Evan had 100 votes and um, Britney Spears had 1,000 <laughs> votes, so clearly Britney wins, right? But in ranked choice voting, 
a lot of it's done by a computer and there's tabulation and people don't see that. And there's a feeling that um, it, because it's not as intuitive, um, that whatever model we choose and however we roll it out and however we implement it needs to prioritize making sure people feel their elections are legitimate and making sure it's transparent to people how we got the result. Because if they see that Brittany got the most votes, but then Evan is the one who's elected, there's gonna be a lot of questions. And those were the, so representation, legitimacy, and transparency were the three most common things I saw across the board. So one thing I think that Darcy's question also brings up that um, I struggled with is that we can't record the interviews that we have. Um, I think that once you do interviews, I think there's some things that you, I just didn't feel comfortable sharing. So that's one of the things I guess we want to think about going forward um, if we're thinking about a, you know, a completely public process. Would that make everyone feel more, just as just something to mull over, would that, do you think that would make like more counselors feel um, more informed and more comfortable about the final appointments that we make. And I'm just, I'm just putting that out there for something for us to think about when we, we rethink this whole practice. Yep, absolutely. Yep, yep. I'm sure everyone read the report, but I do just wanna make sure everyone paid attention to uh, what Paul transcribed from Carol, who goes by Rob Robertson, which is, that he has lived in Amherst for 20 years and done nothing but vote and pay taxes. And now he's ready to stand up. He was very passionate about, I've done nothing for my community and it's time. And I thought that was, again, a lot of new people. George? So I would like to make a motion. Um, I would like to um, uh, move that we accept the town manager's uh, recommendations um, and that we uh, forward these recommendations to the town council for their approval. A second discussion? I think this is an impressive uh, group of people. I think that, uh, that Evan and his co-conspirators have done a very good job in getting a diverse and very qualified pool. And uh, I, for one, am excited to see what they will come up with. Um, they seem to have um, the requisite skills and background experience and enthusiasm. They represent a fairly diverse uh, group of citizens. Um, it's something that I think many people are excited about. And uh, I, I'm, at least speaking personally, impressed by uh, this pool. Um, I have one Darcy? question. Is one of the people appointed the man that brought it to us originally who was trying to get it going and you know the person I'm talking I do, about. I don't know <laughs> the person you're talking about. I do know one of the people, um, but I don't actually remember which one. I know it was one of the, the men. Um, but this is a 50-50 male-female split. Anyways, um, did, did say that they had first gotten interested in RCV by attending charter commission meetings and had been a part of sort of pushing the charter commission to include this in the charter, but I don't know if that's the person to whom you're referring. I forget his name, but he's, he's the person who was, who was pushing us to get it going soon oh. due to the deadline. Oh. The man who gave public comment, I don't think so. Yeah, are we ready? I just didn't know if the discussion was done or if we wanted to, if we were looking up the name and wanted to have that before we took the vote. Are we, do we feel ready to vote with, with or without that name?
while we're waiting, I want to step out for a quick second. He, he personally did talk to each person at the inauguration, I remember, at the reception. He made a point of, of, of uh, talking to each one of us. Um, I guess I assumed that he was um, one of the big organizers. It was at our inauguration. Oh, I'm one of the very first meetings. Uh, so, oh, okay. uh, it was the December 10th meeting of the council. It was Andy Anderson. Thank you. Yep, um, and Andy Anderson, uh, I believe, uh, had many people who interviewed had been in touch with that person, but I don't believe Andy Anderson lives in Amherst. Thank you. Huh. Okay. Solves that. <laughs> No, it's, well, it's not, so it's not connected. Um, sometimes I get just this for a screen, it's for food. isn't it? It's like a modern art thing. It is, and there's nothing on my screen. Mm -hmm. And then if I, it does let me sign into my computer, if I hit the, what I need to for SharePoint, it just comes up as a big screen with an E. And mm -hmm. then mail comes up with, I'm an envelope. Mm -hmm. So I'll just see if that changes. I would say I'll be taking a trip down to IT after yeah, this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we need a vote, right? The town internet? Oh. I'm on too. It's who you know. It's who you know, really. <laughs> uh, okay. We have a motion. I apologize for the fact that I did not use my mic during any of that. Oh, okay. I could not find the person you were looking for. Um, Evan did, and it's not the same person. Uh, Rob Robertson, who is the person that, isn't that the person you're appointing? Uh, Rob Robertson is among uh, the town manager's appointments. Town yes. manager's appointments, okay. He is not the same person. As Andy Anderson. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But we that's, can see where the it. confusion was you know, there. It's absolutely, been a of absolutely. Late yep. Okay. Nothing okay. gets by this committee. Yes. <laughs> so vote. Yep. Second? I seconded it. Okay. So I asked for discussion. Right. We have good. had discussion. Good. Does do we feel that is there any more discussion? Hearing none, I will then call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye, and that is unanimous. Thank you again, Evan. George, you're up. Yep, take your time. Recommendation. I'm sorry, you have in front of you um, the recommendation and hopefully you've had a chance to look at it. My experience is very different from Evan's. Um, there are five slots that were uh, to be filled and we had four candidates. Um, so we actually are short a candidate. Um, so that had some, I think, uh, Im impact on our deliberations. Um, so, um, there were many other people who expressed an interest, but they never went on to the interview stage. So the only people that uh, were put, uh, came forward for interview were uh, four individuals, and um, I'm recommending two of those four. Um, one of them, uh, actually, uh, anyone have questions about participatory, because participatory budgeting is a very new idea. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know if I need to try to explain it uh, to you, no? Okay, fine. <laughs> because um, I wouldn't do a very good job. Um, so I'm recommending uh, Meg Gage um, and uh, I'm recommending Elizabeth Larson. Um, Meg is someone who has been involved in this for quite a while um, and she's very passionate about it and she made that clear in the interview. Um, she's quite knowledgeable about it. She actually has gone to Cambridge, spent a day in Cambridge where they do have participatory budgeting and uh, did some, uh, it, it talked to people in Washington action. Um, she also impressed me with her desire to get young people involved. In Cambridge, you can be as young as 12 and vote in the uh, participatory budgeting uh, process. Wow. Um, and uh, they also have a lot more money than we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, she is clearly knowledgeable, um, very enthusiastic. Um, I did ask her directly, this was not on a sheet, uh, but I did ask her um, if it became clear to her that this was not appropriate for Amherst, would she be able to, to vote that way? And she said she would. And so um, that was a question that I was concerned about. Um, and then Elizabeth Larson, again, um, brings a number of, I think, appropriate skills, familiarity uh, with numbers and with budgeting process. Um, she too expressed uh, a very uh, obvious passion for a more democratic uh, town government um, and, and the idea of being uh, more accessible to the broader public. Um, she was brought into this process, I think, by the whole charter experience and the vote and, and got her engaged in Amherst politics and aware of it. But uh, she, to best, according to her, she has had no other prior experience with uh, the town government. Um, so uh, these are the two that I want to bring forward. Um, in the meeting after we were done, we uh, discussed the four candidates for the five positions. <laughs> um, and it, we, uh, I think there was agreement that all four um, were, were uh, good candidates. And what we decided to do is just to split up. Uh, Paul took two and I took two. Um, and, um, but I didn't face the challenge that Evan faced though it worked out nicely, uh, we didn't have to do a straw poll. <laughs> um, we um, just had four candidates, so. Evan? So I think this is something for our committee to think about, um, although I actually don't think it applies to this one. But one of the, um, if you go back to our process diagram, one of the options is that the committee can declare that the pool is insufficient yeah. and go back and recruit more and say, uh, now, so there's a few things I'm gonna say here, but, and these aren't questions for George, but I think they're important to talk about in the context of this. Um, and so this committee always has the option of saying the pool is insufficient, we're not gonna move forward until we can enhance the pool. To me, having four applications for five slots would be an insufficient pool. I'm not suggesting we do that because this committee has a time constraint, right? We have to that we will run afoul of the charter if we don't. Um, and so to some extent, I think that we have to accept an insufficient pool and move forward. I'm happy that it sounds like the, the few people who did apply were actually qualified. You're not putting people on who you don't feel are qualified just because they applied. 
Um, but I think this committee at some point in the future needs to have a discussion of when we when do we decide that a pool is insufficient, right? When do we decide that we're not going to move forward? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a discussion that has to happen before interviews because it doesn't yeah. make sense to send someone out to interview an insufficient pool. Of course, <laughs> this is the second part of this. Um, I don't know when George got the CAFs for um, participatory budgeting. I know for ranked choice voting, I got them 48 hours before the interviews. The interviews had already been scheduled. Yeah. And so had I, and so I had no idea how many people I was interviewing right. until I got the interview schedule 48 hours before and the interviews had been scheduled. The problem with that is if we didn't have the time constraint and we decided that the pool was insufficient, we would have already had interviews scheduled by the time we knew we had an insufficient pool. So I think there's two conversations that this committee needs to have, not today, but in the future, that this sparks, which is one, when does this committee deem a pool insufficient and decide not to move forward until we get more applicants? And two, I think we need to have a serious conversation with the town manager and town staff yes. about when we get CAFs, because we need to get CAFs before interviews are scheduled, because if we are right. in charge of appointing in the future, right and we decide that we don't have enough applicants to move forward, we need to know that before staff has yeah. scheduled interviews. So I would say on that that um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, and that has been conveyed to the town manager and his staff. I think where the confusion was is that the RAC has a very different uh, protocol. So it's going to be, um, and I will have Paul, you know, come to talk to us a, about this, but um, there's already been communication and I will definitely follow up on that, um, that OCA's process is very different than the RACs. It doesn't make one better than the other. It's just having the, the CAFs, you know, I would say maybe two weeks ahead of time and then not scheduling interviews until the, the OCA interview designee you know, has a chance to look and, and can deem, say, yes, this is sufficient. No, I think we need to do something else. And it gives you enough time, whoever that is, to approach the rest of OCA. And then we, like you said, we need to figure out what our next step is after that. So I would agree with that. Lynn? I think this fits in. I, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying at all. But I do think this fits in with the larger issue of needing to relook at the entire process. Um, yes. And that is, yeah. it, I mean, it's, that's painfully apparent from um, the ongoing questions that have been raised. And that is not to diminish the work of any people in this committee. I have to say, I didn't realize we only had four applicants for participatory budgeting. We had five, did you say? No, four. Four, four but five, we had five spots. seats. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and unfortunately, in this case, you're absolutely correct. There is a time constraint. We have to appoint this group. Basically, because I know a couple people that are being appointed, it's actually a very good group. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's, um, it, but I think some of the problem on this one is nobody really knows what it is yet. It's, right. It's a right. committee, and, and therefore, for instance, seeing Meg Gage on there, who was part of the ongoing con discussion, with the commission is very useful because she can bring the perspective of the commission and you know what did they think it was. Right. Um, it turns out there this kind of committee exists in a lot of other towns as well. And I've learned that from Kathy Shane who's looked at this kind of stuff because she's the finance committee person appointed to this as well. So um, it's got its work cut out for it. But I, I think all of this conversation is a, a point at which you can all take one big deep breath and say, okay, let's step back yeah. <laughs> and look at the whole thing and, oh, we are, and timing and everything else. With this, yeah. this, no one on this committee <laughs> disagrees with you. There's, you know, this is, this entire practice will be ripped apart, done over, deeply discussed. Yeah. Yeah. And input fought, sought from the council. Of course. <laughs> Thank of you. Of course. Yeah. George. So just to continue, um, the questions are obviously welcome, but you, the evaluation criteria modeled um, a good deal on what Evan put forward, um, or what I used, again, given the fact that there was a paucity of candidates 
um, but I did feel that the two candidates that I put forward um, fit a number of these criteria. Um, so um, you can look at those if you have any questions. Um, there were four people present in, in my interviews, uh, myself obviously, uh, Paul Bachelman, member of the uh, Resident Advisory Commission, Connie Kruger, and then Sonia Aldrich, who was the Comptroller and uh, uh, current uh, Finance Director, Interim Finance Director. So there were four people present um, because it was a joint appointment. Um, and finally, uh, just to, for my sake, um, demographics. <coughs> my editorial comment is there, excuse me. And I apologize if, if you really don't think it's appropriate, but I felt I had to say something. Um, we only self-report, and so I wrote down literally what people gave. Um, we're talking about a pool of four individuals, and of whom only, and three of whom gave information, one did not. So I, I feel personally that um, this information is important, but important in the aggregate and um, should be removed uh, from the individual. Uh, I just feel uncomfortable presenting this for a particular body um, because it's fairly obvious to anyone who pays attention, you can identify pretty much who's who. Um, and I think what we're interested in is not a particular body, but um, the overall uh, result. Um, so uh, anyway, there's an editorial comment in there if you want to read it. Anyway, the demographic information I don't do, I'm not a uh, computer literate the way I mean, is. I can't do charts and, and all those beautiful things. Um, so it's just uh, written out. So that's that. George, you did an awesome job. I know. Again. <laughs> <Boring>. <laughs> Evan? So I want to echo, I think, what the president said, which is that given it is very small pool, we were very lucky, I think, with the people uh, that did apply because um, these, I think that these are all really great people to serve. And so uh, we still need one more. Um, but to that point, um, in the discussion afterwards, uh, after we had done the interviews, um, we agreed that all the candidates were, uh, we, we had favorable views of the four that we did interview. And so, um, Paul, uh, we, I took two which covered our responsibility. And Paul said that he had hoped that he could find some more people. So he's hoping to do some more interviews. Um, and we may get another uh, recommended person in the next few days. Um, but right. that was the way it was left. And because yours are covered, it's now his responsibility. Exactly. exactly. Um, but I think that these are, these are great people. And so with that, I'd like to make a motion um, to uh, accept the recommendations put forth by the OCA designee for the Participatory Budgeting Commission and to forward these recommendations to the full town council. A second discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. That is unanimous. So, <clears throat> so we are just going to wait for to see if Paul is going to put forward three people? Paul has uh, put forth his recommendations, he's just put forth two, so there'll just be a vacancy on the committee that. temporarily. Yeah. Oh, so we can, we can, yes, we can vote on yep. those. Yep, absolutely. So I'm really bad at making motions. Evan, do you want to do it? I can do it. So town manager, George, do you want to do it? Uh, I would make the motion that we um, accept the town manager's uh, recommended uh, appointments to the uh, Participatory Budgeting Commission um, and forward these names to the town council. I second discussion we see here a, a definite diversity of age um, one of the candidates is uh, represents the youth component which is <laughs> nice to see and the other uh, belongs to the retired component um, so I thought that was that was nice um, both uh, were definitely interested 
um, and uh, but have a lot to learn. And um, I think both were um, the time commitment was something that they they needed to have it spelled out to them. Um, so um, we'll see. Any other discussion? Further discussion? Because I believe they must make a recommendation to the town council by December of 2020. So they have about 18 months, which wow. I guess is the same as <laughs> ranked choice voting. Is that correct? In other words, both of them I are think due ranked in choice is September 1. September 1. So they're even under a shorter time. Wow. Time frame. So. Well, let's get them going. And further discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. Next. Next. So um, our agenda today had a sort of blanket consider recommendations from the town manager. Yeah. So I did at the beginning of this meeting move um, his LSSE appointments yes. into our folder. I don't know if we want to consider those today. I read them and looked at them. Um, I have my own opinions. I feel ready that I could do that. Is do other people want to take um, some extra time until our next meeting to do that? I would be more than happy to consider them today. I read Me his too. memo when it came yeah. out. And yeah. <laughs> George. <laughs> Constitutionally, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with getting appointments, and this may just be my lack of uh, not doing things at, at late hours or very early hours in the morning, but a little uncomfortable reading appointments and at the same meeting and then approving them. Um, so that may be my fault, um, but that's the situation I'm in. Um, is there a time, uh, what's the, uh, the, the, I mean, obviously we'd like to get these things moving along. Um, our next meeting is oh, no, very next soon. Monday. Well, oh, it's not Memorial Day. Yeah, We're not no. meeting on Memorial Day. Oh, no, I, thought there was a, I know you're thought eager there was to do that, but no, I'm sorry. I, so we're actually two weeks out is what you're so, suggesting. Right, and so the thing that I would say is that, um, so we, we got those names, um, well, for me, it feels like a while ago. Um, we're going to be getting recommendations from the town manager for committees in rapid fire. I believe that the email that he sent us, there was maybe the six that he said that was going to come our way. So what I would say to this committee is um, I can send you, I can resend you Paul's email. There's, there's, and there'll probably be more. So we're looking at maybe six to ten, which means I think that everyone needs to, I'm not, I do not think that you should try to read these on the fly and say, you know, I agree. But what I think everybody, um, and I can try to send some reminders, gentle reminders, that, um, and, and re-forward things or say, hey, did you, did you see these names? Um, because I'm feeling like, you know, as they come in, we'll need to look at them fairly quickly, think about our questions, um, think about how we feel about it, because at our next meeting, which is now, it's actually far away, we, we should be voting on as many as we feel comfortable with. And I would say if we're starting to get, you know, almost 10, we should feel fairly comfortable with, I would love to say 10, um, but at least eight. And if, if people need to, I don't know, if you want me to send you coffee, if you need a reminder, I'm more than happy. Evan? So one thing I, oh, I keep yelling into this. One thing I think we need to consider is, um, so per the charter, right, we can either positively approve, right. we can reject, or we can let the clock run out and they become um, effective within right. 30 days. So um, this committee, we can choose to look at these today or we can wait. However, this committee doesn't meet again until June 3rd. Right, so, so we could meet on June 3rd and say, okay, we're gonna forward these and the council has to vote on them tonight. But if, Ju in other words, the, the, council meet, the full council meets June 3rd and June 17th, right? Yeah. Um, you're within that 30 days still, but you're starting to run up against right. the clock. 
um, and we're going to have other appointments to right. do. Yeah. So I think it's something to consider that we actually we don't have to do anything with these, um, and so we we can vote to send them to the council today, or we can sit on them for a little while because there's there's no harm in not forwarding them because we technically don't have to do anything. Um, so I, if if I'm fine voting on these today, but if other members of the committee feel like they need more time to look at them, I'm fine waiting because even if we don't get to them, they still become effective within 30 days. So that being said, I would say that I myself feel like, um, and this is just me, I'm only one person here, is that I like to be able to feel comfortable with what's being forth, if there are qu people who are being put forth so that I feel like I have some knowledge of it and I feel more comfortable being able to say, yes, I read it, we like it, please consider, um, or not. So your point is completely true and valid. Um, and then again, I'll just bring it to the point that I'm, I'm gonna bring it up to everybody because I know we've been under a lot of time constraints in different committees and the town council in general. But if other people on this committee feel the way that I do, that you wanna feel like you read it, you know it, you feel like you can say, yes, go ahead, town council, or mm, I don't think so. Um, and even just letting the clock run out. Just to keep in mind, we need to, there's at least, I think there's like 10 that are coming our way. And there's a few that are already there. Um, I can try to make sure that I send you like another email just so that you know you've got it. Um, so I will do that as chair, is make sure that I, you know, really uh, send these to you and maybe even ask you just to reply that yes, I got them because I, I would feel I uh, would feel better in myself that at the next meeting that we have it's, it is very time sensitive that we can all be able to say, I've read it, I've looked at it, I know my three options and I'm ready to pick it. So, um, Darcy. We did get these at our last meeting and when I just looked at them and I was amazed to see that I have already read it. Okay. <laughs> Um, I, and it seems like these are not, um, there's like no particular controversy around them and several of them are people that have, are already on the commission. Um, I'd be fine voting on them today. Um, I would feel uncomfortable as George said, if we did, had just gotten them today, right. that does make right. me feel awfully rubber stampish. Agreed. Um, but since we got them on Monday, We've had a couple days to look at them, and you know, n I don't know. Normally, I mean, the the descriptions look reasonable. No one has called me and said, "Whatever you do, don't appoint this person." <laughs> um, so I, I I I'm okay with appointing them today. Evan, I I agree 100% with what Darcy said. I'd be fine voting today. The one thing I would say that maybe I would like communicated back to the town manager, who's not here today, is um, I think it's great that he gave these little profiles for Stephanie Jackson and for Victor Nunez Ortiz. Um, I know Sarah Marshall and I know Rebecca Demley. I don't know Meg Rosa. And so to have the profile just has served on the LSC Commission to, since 2015 to me is a little insufficient um, because what that says is we have to provide you a description of their qualifications if they're not on the committee, but if they're on the committee, I don't need to do that. And I guess their qualification is they're on the committee, but it, especially in these early phases, it w I think we could communicate back to the town manager that it would just be nice to have a profile for everyone because um, reappointment doesn't necessarily have to be a given. Agreed. Um, so I, I'm still fine voting for these um, right. because I, I looked through them. I, I've, I've done my due diligence. Um, but it, going forward, I think it would be useful to have more of a description for, for incumbents as well. And I think that we found that even with um, Planning Board and Zoning board, board of Appeals, and we all decided that as we're look, looking through this practice again, um, that we would take a harder look at the CAFs, where the questions on the CAFs, and actually um, maybe demand more of a minimum of what people 
um, provide to us. And um, also, again, we brought up the maybe sending them questions ahead of time that they give us a written answer. So I think that is just reconfirming the fact that we really feel like we need that. And then, you know, anyone who's going to, uh, you know, say okay to appointments also needs that information. I'm willing to vote on these. I think part of the problem is, is clearly me. Um, I need to get used to this process because I should have looked at these in advance. I you've, didn't. you've been busy, so, George. I know, but um, so I need to simply get um, uh, clear on that so I, I do my, my work. But um, uh, the only question I have, we, we simply don't know how large the applicant pool is. Is that what we, uh, in other words, uh, and that's something we're not going to know or he's not going to report that to us. So. We don't know how many people applied um, for this, whether the, he was like, uh, he just got the number that he needed. We just don't know. And we're not going to know. Is that is that the, where yeah. we're at? From what I understand, that's true, and that he will only, he won't give us that information. And then the rest of the demographic information, he's going to kind of ball everything that's up right. and then give it to us quarterly. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a discussion that we can also have, you know, for, and I think it's very telling for what we feel like that we would need for information. And then also what town council itself, like why they would be in a quandary. So I think that's an illuminating point that we can get at. It just seems to me that um, that basic bit of information would be of some use to us, but maybe not. I, mean, I think what do it would be. Think? I, I, just, you know, if, if you got 13 applicants and these are the people he put forward, or he just got, you know, uh, just the bare number he needed and these are the people putting forward, um, do people feel like that is something they would like to know? I would kind of feel like I'd like to know that. I'm not interested in the names, I'm not interested in reading the CAFs, but I would like to know um, how large the pool was. Darcy? This would all be made completely simple if we just got the CAFs automatically when people applied for anything. Full council, the OCA, everything. It would just make things so easy. So. Well, there we di we disagree on that, but um, I'm just asking about the number. Um, you want all that information, though, don't you, George? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I'm not interested in in second guessing his choices, other than simply getting a sense, I guess, and maybe it's just curiosity whether, um, and so I can live without it, I guess. But no, I'm not. I'm not interested in, in second guessing his decisions. Um, I'm just uh, would like to know how large the pool was from which you had to choose. Evan? Sarah? You're Sarah? Fine. <laughs> no, it's okay. Go ahead, Evan. Um, so, I, I, as I've made clear before, I'm not interested in seeing the CAFs, and I, I don't want to try to compel him to do that. Um, I don't know that I need the exact number of people who applied, but I, I do think that this committee should maybe consider in our report having. Um, maybe some feedback to the town manager. And so the two things that I'm hearing, one of which was for myself, um, is it'd be nice to have fuller profiles on people who currently serve on committees um, that the, the description for an incumbent cannot be they already serve on a committee. Um, and then the second thing is maybe a more thorough summary of the process. Because what you're asking for is, is really not, was it 12 people who applied or 13 people? What you're asking for is, was there a large applicant pool um, or, or were you in a participatory budgeting situation where you were really trying to get people? And you don't need exact numbers for that, right? I mean, you, you, that can be descriptive. You gave us exact numbers for participatory budgeting, um, but you could have said there were fewer applications than there were available slots, and that would have conveyed the exact same thing without the numbers. Um, so I don't think he, me personally, I don't think I need the exact numbers, but it would be good to have a better description of the applicant pool. I, I will say, based on third-hand knowledge, um, this commission was one where there were not a lot of people who directly applied to LSSE, and they often reach out to general interest people. Um, and so this may have been one that didn't have a particularly large pool. That would have been useful to know. I don't, I don't necessarily think we need the exact numbers, but it would be, so maybe one of the things we can do is start compiling as we go through this, start compiling a list of requests to the town manager, because he is, I mean, he's open to, yeah. to feedback. And the other thing we should consider is, um, today we're considering three sets of town manager appointments. The town manager is not here. 
um, maybe because he's busy, maybe because he had no idea that we were going to be doing this. But in the future, I'm wondering if we should be, um, if, if we should consider whether or not we want to request the town manager's presence um, to be able to defend his choices the same way that George and I were able to defend ours and Sarah was able to defend hers um, in the future. Lynn? Yeah. <laughs> Two things. You have an email. Evidently, they had a shortage of staff upstairs. And that's why Angela wasn't able yeah. to be here to take your minutes. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know what else might be going on. But nevertheless, um, I think it is appropriate to ask him to be here. Yeah. Uh, when you're going to have these discussions, he may not always know you're going to have the discussions. So that's something that Aunt, that you as chair I'll need to coordinate sure with him. Yeah. Um, the other thing that, I mean, uh, again, I, I personally would prefer that each uh, town manager appointment set come with a recommendation from OCA. Mm -hmm. um, um, I really don't like the idea that we just let it expire. Right. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you can act appropriately, that's fine. You could um, act on the morning of the 3rd and then just give a verbal recommendation. But again, that's not exactly the best practice either. Um, but while we're, as we are approaching the summer months where there's, you know, for instance, three weeks between uh, the two council meetings in July, and then there may be as much as four weeks before the next meeting in August, wow. uh, there's going to be some issue here with the 30 days. And so one of the things you might talk about is even though a 30 day period might expire at least some at least you know give something as a communication for mocha anyway even to say gee we're pleased that these were appointed and we looked them over and although the 30 days has expired we either agree or whatever but again i think the separate from the conversation about the appointment process of council appointed people uh, like you've been doing. Uh, I think the process for this side of recommendations it, it needs to be looked at. There's pieces of it that you may not be able to tweak like you'd like to, but there's other pieces of it like having the, the town manager present right. when you discuss the appointments yeah. uh, would be part of that flow chart that you review. I, I agree with that, and we can compile some things to, you know, ask and see, you know, notify Paul and see what he thinks. The other reason why I think it's important for us to get some idea of how many people applied, and again, like Evan said, it could be we had a large, beautiful, varied bunch, or mm, not so much, is that we are also outreach, and that's one of the things that we're going to have to really kind of get up to speed on. Um, so we are also the ones, I mean, RAC feels that they are, are working to find people for town manager appointments and um, the community participation officers also feel that way. Um, so town council needs to also be actively recruiting people. So that's one thing that, that George and I and Darcy and our, our subcommittee of outreach were talking about um, and I'm hoping that maybe even we can meet some during the summer a little bit. I'll try to make it fun. Um, because I do think that's something we really need to kind of get up to speed on, um, helping and, and make it sort of a, a more firm, cohesive structure in which we do that. And I don't know if I said that, because obviously I didn't have enough caffeine, but so th that's one of the reasons why we, it's kind of a circle for us, appointments and outreach. Evan? George? Well, I'm willing to make a motion. Um, that we um, accept the town manager's uh, recommended appointees for LSSE and that we forward these uh, to the town council. Can I edit that motion? I think uh, we need to say with a recommendation for approval. And I'll second that. <laughs> Discussion? Hearing none, 
All those in favor? Aye. And that is unanimous. Well, with one and one person absent. Yeah, it is. Yep. <laughs> We're done, are we? <laughs> well, no. pretty much. I mean, we. I, so then the there's, yeah, go ahead, then Evan. The so, um, a yeah, same. Um, and I just finished one. Uh, looking at our posting, we've done almost everything except for review and prep report, reports to town council 6 3. And so, a logistical consideration um, is uh, our. our Chair, I assume, will be prepping a report for the council on 6 3 based on our two meetings, although I don't necessarily know that we need a written report of the meetings. Um, but we do, we do, we do need, um, my assumption is for RCV and PBC yeah. that we will follow the similar process to yes. planning board where we will send the two reports from George and myself to yeah. council, but with a cover letter yes. that describes the votes and the deliberation. Yeah. Someone needs to prepare that cover letter. Um, I am more than happy to do it since half of the recommendations uh, were mine, and I would love to take some work off of the chair's plate because she deserves a vacation. <laughs> um, but I, I'm also willing to give that to someone else if they would prefer to do it. I'll buy us some coffee if we do that, Evan. No, I think that that would be great. I think that you also did a really good job on helping me with my cover report. So the way that the, the time frame goes is that um, everything, the cover letter, the report, a report to town council should all be done by this Wednesday around 11-ish so that it can all be sent, um, it gets sent to Angela but um, Margaret is the one who is the keeper of all things. Um, and so getting everything in by around, at least by like one or two o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday will mean that they can be posted in enough time for town council to work on them, which would be Thursday morning. So does, do we all feel comfortable? Yeah. Evan, do you? So, yeah, so I would follow because I said it was I, the same. Way it, I'll was, follow the yes, same process yes, that we did to, yes. to submit the last report. So yes. it goes um, to several people, and it needs to um, be part of the. Post. Okay, yeah. So it'll I'll be just, those the, things. The exact same process right, we used to the last one. I'll follow. So just making sure yeah. it goes to Angela, it goes to Margaret, and that it, it's and it, made yeah. really clear that they need to be attached to the packets the yes. same way that they were last okay. time, and there is a. There is a little written guideline on that, and I would if you if you feel like oh my gosh I don't no, I think I, I now I don't I still have I still have all those emails yeah. from when we sent the last report and so, so I would be more than happy to help you do that, um, and I we already have a template going um, to report out to town council in a, in a report you know like a votes 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 kind of form. Um, my I'm not sure what's going on with my computer. I think it should be able to be fixed by IT like today. Is it okay with you if I just check in with you? If yeah. so, so my thought is I'd probably just take the planning board and ZBA one and just adapt and just do it, it that way. Yep. Um, and then of course I can always run it. I, I, I would I wouldn't want to send it in without review by the chair. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's great. I think yeah. we're fine with that. And so then um, I think the next thing I'd like to just make sure that we know timelines and that things are okay is checking in with Darcy about um, how things are going along with finance committee interviews and prepping for that. Um, Carol? Uh, Angela set up interviews for June 6th, which, which is a Thursday morning. Um, and attending will be Paul and Sonia. Okay. So uh, that will mean that it, that it won't be on the agenda for the next, for that June 3rd 
meeting. No, wait a minute. Yes, June 3rd. Or the 10th? Why not? So your if your interviews are on the 6th, right? Yeah. Then your your report has to be posted 48 hours in advance of our meeting, so that doesn't give you enough time to write the report. Your interviews are already after that deadline, so we won't be able to discuss it as OCA on the 10th either. So your report. Why not the 10th? Because you won't have. Oh, oh time the 6th. The 6th, the 10th, the the oh, that's only four days in oh, the weekend. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. So um, OCA will, will have. So your report then would need to be posted by 9 30 a.m. Thursday, June 13th so that we could discuss them on June 17th. And then the council could potentially vote on July 1. Which is fine with finance from what I gather. Okay, then we're fine. So, yeah, go ahead. I have, a, I have a question for Darcy. Have you seen the CAFs? No. Yeah, neither have we. So that's something I will definitely, I'm gonna be here for IT, so maybe I'll, depending on how busy everybody is, or I'll send an email again and ask for those. Uh, obviously, staff's been very busy, but I will request those again. Um, I know, I, I'm being kind. Um, so the other question I had was, I think I saw something that um, Kathy said she was gonna try to get you the description of the committee by the end of this week, if she, knowing that they're overloaded, but if we possibly could, I would love to see that and have that go out with a packet, just because we're trying to you know, keep that process together. When you say go out with the packet to the interviewees? Yeah, even if they're sent. Yes. Even if they're sent a little bit late, if they could, you know, if they get them, yeah. with even, even just two days heads up. And that, so the other thing is, is that that should also be on your table when you're interviewing. Right. That's one of the things that should be on the table. So if we can do that, that would be wonderful. Okay. Right. Kathy also. Who is planning to meet with me to talk more about, you know, like the spread of different possible skills that we might be looking for if we wanted to get mm -hmm. a balance. Right. Um, so Good. that is hopefully going to happen this week sometime. Excellent. So I thinking that um, I have a lot of work to do to make sure that we stay organized, but I will definitely do that. Evan, I thank you so much for volunteering to do that extra work to make sure it goes out in time. And just get a hold of me, I mean, um, if you have run into any problems or need some help. Yep, so now is time for public comment. Okay. Well, <laughs> yay, uh, we're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Where's my gavel? <laughs> I know I need one, yes. <laughs> I was actually gonna bring my ball peen, but I figured it's too hard on this surface. So um, on that note, I would like to make a motion for us to adjourn. All those in favor. <laughs> yeah. Move seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you all.